Hello. My name is Kenneth Ryan. And I'm Lindsay Reeseth. And welcome back to Fan Fiction Friday. Today on the show, we're going to be reading Blow Off Steam by Irene Census, all one word. It is a mass, ama- mass effect, all media types fan fiction. It features Male Shepherd with Garis Vakarian. This is the summary. After Horizon, Commander Shepard plunges into work. His best friend worries and goes out for a drink. First, they flirt eagerly with a few others. But why look far when everything good is so near? That Thresher Maw had just come in handy, and the fact that some Krogans were playing crazy was even better. One by one fell under his shots. Fortunately, These guys took such good shots. He raged like grunt, if not worse. Only, his best friend had to fight hard. Again and again, he called his name and pulled him into cover more often. Loki Shepard didn't want cover. He wanted to kill, more and more. But finally, there was no enemy left. Grunt laughed, cheered. Garrus was relieved. He was just disappointed. Silently, he climbed into the Mako. The commander breathed deeply and took off. Grunt was now officially an Erdnaut. At least something. On the way back to the shuttle, he hardly noticed anything. The next mission had to be prepared. Shortly back to the Normandy, check the equipment, refresh ammunition, and then back to the planet with Morden, another hunt. All the better. He didn't want any rest. He didn't want any rest, and even more, he didn't want any time to think. He simply surrendered to his anger. As long as he was angry, he worked. That was what it was all about. The dark-haired man sighed softly. Who should he take with him? Grunt would probably not be a good choice. The fighting style would be perfect, but should it really be about healing the genophage? No, that was not a good choice. His best friend just took it away from him. He was already standing at the shuttle waiting for him. Vorcha and Krogans rushed towards them. Loki tried to keep his anger under control. Now he needed a clear head. For one or two comments about Morden's views, he couldn't resist. Even if he was alone with his opinion here, Shepard thought the genophage was wrong. Always have. First, they had misused the Krogans as weapons, and then, slowly, he breathed out. So he left it at some biting comments. Finally, they had reached their goal. He prevented the Salarian from deleting the research data. Malon Heplorn had deserved to die. He would have shot him without hesitation. Nevertheless, he talked briefly about it with his team member. Morden let him live. Being persecuted by the Werelock clan was certainly worse than a bullet in the head. He was sick of thinking and he had to go back to the ship. But they had to go back. With the Mako, it went back to the area of the Erdnaut clan, and from there, with the shuttle back on the Normandy, he walked through the whole ship and talked to everyone from his crew. The dark-haired man knew what he was doing here. He was stalling. No more and no less. He did everything in his power not to calm down. But then it was time. There was nothing more to do. He had been on his feet for almost two days now. Exhausted, Shepard finally went to his loft. Tired, the dark-haired man got into the shower and went straight to bed. Sleep caught up with him immediately. As soon as his head had touched the pillow, he sank into the realm of oblivion. But this sweet escape didn't last long. Even in his dreams, he saw this face Kaiden's face, which turned away from him. Since Horizon, it haunted him, no matter if he was awake or asleep. 
For a moment, Loki was relieved when he finally woke up again. But his thoughts quickly drifted to his former partner. There was nothing to do. Today, there was no mission. No goal that had to be accomplished. The Normandy should look for resources. Nothing where he could be helpful somehow. Discontented, he folded the photo frame. He didn't want to see that face anymore. But then Miranda wanted to speak to him. And so it went to Ilium. For Miranda's sister, it went well. They could save her from her father, at least for the time being. Loki did not believe that this man would give up so fast. On the way back to the ship, Garus suddenly stopped at a shop and looked a little attentively. He went to the Turian and tried to find what the others were so interested in. But nothing unusual struck him. Miranda was meanwhile out of sight. She was probably already back on the ship. Silently, he observed his best friend a while. Then, however, he turned around. Here he could leave him with security alone, as long as the sniper would sign nothing. He was relatively safe on Ilium. But just as he was about to leave, the other grabbed his arm and pulled it in the other direction. He pulled him unerringly into a bar. He headed for a corner table and literally forced him into a free chair. Shaking his head, he looked after the Turian who went to the bar. After a short time, he came back with two bottles and just sat next to him. You need a break, Loki. So bad, big guy. If they know you, you work. It's barely noticeable in use, but Kaiden's an idiot. Do you think? After Horizon, definitely. I would have liked to beat his brains out. Only unfortunately we had something else to do. We did. You know he's not right. Do I know that? Loki, do you really believe that? I'm not so sure, big guy. What if he's right? What if Cerberus was messing with me after all? Loki, you're still you. I was dead, Garus. I died. Joker saw it. I don't know how they got me back. Maybe they didn't. Maybe I am a clone. But it doesn't really matter. I am back again. I live. For whatever reason. But I can't blame him for his words if I'm unsure of myself. You remember everything? The whole life of Loki Shepard, yes. Your Loki Shepard. Thanks, big guy. He'll come to his senses again. When this is over, we'll find him, and you'll talk some sense into him. You'll help me with that? Just like you helped me with Sidonis. Only the goal is another one. I don't even know what you have. The guy is still alive. Yes, you didn't kill anyone. Why actually Omega, Garrus? Because of you. I always had my problems with sea security. I wanted to achieve something, and the whole bureaucracy was always in my way. Then you came, and we achieved something. We saved the damn galaxy. You can be an asshole, Loki. You stretch the laws, but you rarely cross them. If there is no other way, or if lives are at stake. I also wanted to achieve something, being able to help you better. Spectre become... And then you died. The Normandy was destroyed. Nobody believed your warnings. Nobody believed me. Everything seemed pointless to me. I was looking for a place where I could achieve something. Actually, Omega was only a stopover. When I arrived there, I saw a Vorcha threatening an old couple. He wanted to cut the woman's throat. I did what you would have done. I killed the Vorcha, and the couple could leave. Shortly afterwards, I met him. He had problems with some mercenaries. I suddenly felt right there. According to your example, I built up a team. A good team. People who wanted to change something. And we had success. The life for the people became easier. My mantra was, what would Loki do? It worked well for a long time. And then once I didn't act on it, and everything went wrong. I had resigned myself to death. I even contacted my father and talked to him. And then, a mercenary with an N7 armor. Shit, I thought I had hallucinations. I only had eyes for that figure, for every single movement. And then, suddenly, you stood in front of me. You already recognized me on the bridge. I did. You didn't recognize me? No. What did you think then? Honestly? 
I thought if Garrus was on the other side now, I'd be dead by now. Now they both had to laugh. He would ask no further questions. He had quickly learned that from Garrus. He told him as much as he could. The Turian went to his limits. If nothing more came, it was because he could not go any farther. They had both already emptied a bottle, and Shepard went to get two new ones. Shepard sat next to the sniper again. Tell me, you and Kaiden? We were a couple, yes. Well, no one night stand? No. On the way to Ilos, it started. But when we both survived, it wasn't easy. You were his commander. Exactly. That was the problem. In the service, we behaved exactly the same. Somehow ridiculous. We saw each other every day, but only when we were free, we had something of each other. When it comes up, a month in total. Okay. I just have to ask. You want to know who is the bottom? Is it so obvious? Yes. I'm sorry. I guess it's an inappropriate question. It's okay, but I'm still too sober to answer that question. You can change that. Laughing, he looked after his best friend when he went back to the bar to get supplies. They spent a lot of time in the bar. He had contacted Miranda and told her that he still had something to do on the planet. Shepard knew what the sniper was up to. He had to talk everything from the soul. His feelings. The trick worked. He felt betrayed. Kaiden's behavior had hurt him. Garrus just listened. At some point, Loki didn't want to talk anymore, so they just kept drinking and looking at the dancers. Hey, big guy. The Torian woman back there stares at you all the time. I think she's interested. With the scars? Forget it, Loki. And you're sure about that? Absolutely sure. How long was the last time you were here? About a year. And with you? Not so long. It was... Fuck. Okay. Longer ago. I was dead two years. That doesn't count, does it? Yes, that counts. Ah, shit. No guy here to please you? I like the Asari. You... the Asari? I can do with both sexes. But with the Turian, you are sure. Maybe you should try it sometime. If I'm really gonna flirt with her, I'd have to do something with someone else in front of her. You're insatiable, aren't you? Yes, we are. But that's the way it is with us, and that's exactly where the problem is. Why? To get them around, I'd have to find someone else to do something with me. That's why Turians never go to a bar alone. You are not alone. I should fuck you in front of her? Okay. I didn't know you guys were going that far. What were you thinking? You'd just flirt with someone else, and if she saw that you were successful... But I didn't know that you were fully enjoying success. We don't do things by half. You make it really complicated. If you say so. They spent a few more hours in the bar. Loki flirted with some ladies, hoping that Garus would take him as an example. But nothing happened. The two Turians were always looking at each other. Annoyed, he twisted his eyes. Finally, he was grabbed by the arm. He stumbled slightly. Loki had drunk a lot. Garus, what's the matter? We both reached a level that could be dangerous. Too stupid. Not for long, and I would have gotten the Asari around. You should have. The Turian is staring right at you. Can you stop that now? Why? Is that unpleasant for you? Come on. You have to let off some steam. I do know you. We both should, but not here. Okay, Garrus. What's going on? I just think about it. You're not usually like that. Normally, I'm also sure that all parts of me work. I haven't been able to do this test yet. Laughing, the Turian patted him on the shoulder and let him go again. As soon as he moved away from his best friend, the other Turian turned around again. This people was really complicated. Pull me to the toilet. What? Just do it. Garus really did. Stumbling, he followed him. From the corner of his eye, he saw the woman following them. He quickly closed the door and grinned at his best friend. He still seemed confused, but then he shook his head. That won't work, Loki. You say. I know you should be in front of her, but I am human and shy. You are shy? That is new to me. But she doesn't know that. That's true again. You've not answered my question yet. If I'm lying down, 
It's only when Kaiden is sitting on me with his legs apart. And with whom do you have more fun, men or women? Both have their advantages. In my experience, men can handle their mouths much better, whereas you can get to the point faster with women. With the mouth? Fellatio. Blowing. Has many names. With you, rather unusual. Two pointed teeth and missing lips. Humans are really fixed orally. Maybe. You can hardly have a say there. Right. But it's much easier with us if two men have sex together. Natural lubrication and no tight muscle ring? I know. Have you ever had sex with the Turian? I did. And what was it like? Humans are tighter. Somehow, I have the impression that you have more experience than I do. I'm older, too. I've already caught up. That's right. How long are we supposed to stay in here? Are you just asking indirectly about my stability? I would ask you directly. I mean, so that the lady out there would believe us. A little more. Ah. So you just insert a quickie to convince your actual partners. Exactly. They stayed in the room for some time. As soon as they stepped out of the door, his best friend was pushed back in by the Turian. Grinning, he went back to the bar. Patiently he waited, whether the sniper came again. He had used the time to continue drinking and talking to the Asari. Finally, she pulled him with her. Her destination was a hotel. He quickly wrote Garus a message that he should not worry. A few hours later, he was lying quite satisfied in the hotel bed. The Asari had disappeared. Surprised, Shepard looked up as the door opened and his best friend came in. Grinning, he looked at him and stood up. He had no problem showing himself naked in front of him. They had often seen each other naked. Had fun, big guy? Yes. You too, I suppose. Oh, yes. Shall we go back then? I'm going to take a shower. I enjoy not being spied on once in a while. Do you think you're also being watched in the shower? I think they're watching me everywhere. I exchanged all my armor and weapons. Also, the Omni-Tool. Cerberus should have bugs everywhere. Hopefully not inside me. Loki went to the bathroom and enjoyed an extensive shower. When he came back, Garus sat on the bed and looked at him. Shepard stood in front of him, dressed only in a towel, and looked back. Something was wrong. What's the matter, Garus? Nothing. I'm just enjoying the peace. You enjoy the peace? Now I'm worried. What is going on? It wasn't as satisfying as expected for a long time. So bad? Not bad. Only unsatisfactory. Shit. Sorry for you, big guy. It's okay. I can handle it. Only the armor is really uncomfortable right now. Do you want to go somewhere else? Maybe you'll find something satisfying. I just want to go back and out of this tightness. Do you still want to use the shower? Good idea. Grinning, he looked after the Turian. He really walked like on eggs. He used the time to look for his things together. This task was more difficult than I thought. His armor was spread all over the room. But where the hell was his underwear? They had come in here and had attacked each other. Their clothes had flown through the entire room. Where had they been? Ah, in the shower. <laughs> that meant his shorts were in the bathroom. Without hesitation, he entered the room. Shepard didn't look at the shower if it was busy. He really heard a quiet wheeze. Searching, he looked around. There it was, on the washstand. Just as he was standing in front of the big mirror, the sniper came out of the shower. He stared into the mirror image in disbelief. He had often seen his best friend naked, but never excited. His blue penis stood hard from his body. It was much darker and more powerful than the Turian he had slept with. The circumference was impressive. Quickly, he looked back at the table. I'll be gone in a minute. It's okay. I was done anyway. Doesn't look like it. Oh, so you noticed that. It's hard to miss it. Do you need help? Garus stepped close behind him. The commander looked into the mirror and the sniper so directly in the eyes without having to turn around. Two rough hands stroked briefly over his abdominal muscles. The surprised expression on the other's face made him grin. Do you want to help me? Actually, I wanted to draw your attention to what kind of hotel we are in. There are plenty of aides here, but if you would rather have my help... I know where we are. What a hotel. Your skin is very soft. Women's skin is even softer. Don't your skin feel the same everywhere? No. He grabbed the hand of his best friend and let him drive over his eyelids, then over his lips. The lips were examined more closely by the Turian. 
It was fascinating how careful he was. Finally, he even pushed his fingers into his mouth. He felt over his flat teeth and finally felt his tongue. Loki just couldn't help himself. He began to suck on the strange finger and wrapped his tongue around him. Garus growled up darkly. The sniper jerked his finger into the foreign mouth cavity. With a quiet pop, with a quiet plop, he pulled it out again. Fuck, Loki. Now I have an impression why you're so orally fixated. I'll say it. Maybe I should try it with a human. Oh? Will you let me go now? If you were not my best friend... Then what? Then I would try it now. And our friendship keeps you from doing that. Well, with us, it's normal. Friendship with extras. What? We have that, too. And you really would with me? I trust you, Garrus. And I find you attractive. I wouldn't have a problem with that. Maybe this wasn't a good idea. But then his towel fell to the ground, and a rough hand lay around his soft member. The fingers of the sniper were touching his cock. He lowered his head against Garrus' shoulder. The mirror image of the Turian stared at him. A pleasant shiver ran through his body. Slowly, the blood flowed into his loins. Here your skin felt different, too. <laughs> now the fingers lay themselves correctly around his organ and drove slowly up and down. Loki's tongue jumped out and moistened his dry lips. He could hardly imagine that Garus had never done this to a human before. The Turian grasped briefly under his glands and moved his foreskin with every movement. Darkly, Shepard moaned. I want to feel your lips, Loki. Oh, yes. Slowly the commander turned around. He pushed the Turian a little back. As soon as he pushed his back against the shower cubicle, the human sank to his knees. Grinning, he embraced the hard blue member. Directly, the sniper growled up. Playfully, he let his tongue glide over the wet tip. His best friend tasted different than his former lover. Somehow, fresher. He couldn't describe it better. A mixture of herbs, somehow. As soon as Garrus's hips moved toward him, he withdrew. Hold still. <clears throat> as soon as the other leaned back, he let his tongue slide from the base to the tip. The other man's hands clenched into fists, but he held still. Shepard opened his lips and put them slightly around the shiny point. Directly, the other man growled open. Shepard was not impressed. Carefully, he began to suck. Since the other man had no other choice, he only let his head sink into his neck and groaned throatily. Shepard put his hands around the free part of the shaft. Slowly, he lowered his head and took more and more of the cock into his mouth. The tip slipped along his palate. Hard, he pressed the knob still with his tongue against it. Garus moaning became louder and louder. Slowly, Loki's head slipped deeper. He took a deep breath and then let the penis slide into his throat. Loki! The commander jerked his head back and forth. He kept increasing the vacuum in his mouth. Finally, his nose pushed against the loins of the sniper. He stopped for a moment before withdrawing until only the tip rested in him. Again, he moved forward. Suddenly, two hands grabbed his head. Hart pushed Garus towards him. Shepard made a gurgling sound. The Turian fucked his mouth and he liked it. His eyes fell into the mirror and he could see the hard dong disappear between his lips. His throat was wound fucked. He couldn't breathe anymore. Firmly, his lips pushed against the hard plates. Again, the other shouted his name. His sperm shot deep into the throat. Garrus's body became quite soft. His hands sank, powerless. The dark-haired man withdrew directly. At the rear, he gasped for air. The sniper was still completely out. The commander stood up and led the other one to the washstand. It was time for his revenge. Firmly, he pressed the upper body of the other on the washstand. Hungry, he licked his bloody lips. The sight was just horny. The protective plates on Garrus's reverse sides had pulled themselves apart. He had a clear view of the pulsating entrance. He literally dropped. Shepard embraced his own penis and pumped it several times. He distributed the first drops of the pre-ejaculate before he pushed into his best friend with a firm thrust. 
The younger one threw his head into his neck and groaned loudly. Turians felt very different. The walls were much softer and wider, but the inner structure was insane. It felt ribbed. Right away, he began to stab him hard. His hands roughly embraced the sensitive waist and made the sniper moan again. He drilled himself harder and harder into the Turian. To see the face of the other in the mirror while he was fucking him from behind almost let him come. Quickly, he grasped the still fully erect blue limb and pumped it to the rhythm of his jolts. He never thought Garus was so loud during sex. He moaned or shouted his name. An irrepressible pressure built up in his abdomen. His best friend pushed himself up and sank against him. His hand moved faster and faster. His partner's seeds splashed hard on the mirror. One last time, he accelerated his jolts. With a loud moan, he gave his sperm to the others. Panting, he withdrew. Together, they took another shower. Loki headed for the bed. He was far too exhausted to go back to the ship. The blue-eyed man simply lay down next to him in bed. In the absence of a blanket, he sought the proximity of the other. Turians were just so much hotter than humans. He didn't cuddle up to him, but he could still feel the warmth of the other. Garus also slipped closer to him and even put an arm around his hip. He was pulled tight to the hot body. Satisfied, the commander grumbled and finally fell asleep. When he woke up, he lay on his stomach. Rough fingers traced his back muscles. Directly, a goosebump formed on his body. What is that? Goosebumps is triggered by various situations. Among other things, pleasure and excitement. Does that excite you? I like it. Excited is said too much. Humans stand on touches, but as soft as your skin is, I can understand that. Our skin is simply more sensitive. Suddenly, Garus began to massage him properly. The commander twisted his eyes with lust. That felt so damn good. His cramped muscles were deeply grateful for this treatment. The Turian explored his entire back. As soon as his bones cracked, he withdrew frightened. Loki groaned loudly. It's okay. Those are blockages that are loosened. Directly, his best friend continued. How could he do that so well? Sweat came out of his pores and his breath was slowly getting heavier. As soon as Garus massaged the lower part of his back, he had to suppress a moan. How many Turians have you slept with? Now with a total of three. Two men and one woman. And when was that? With the woman, I was at the academy. I met her in a bar. We were both totally drunk and eager to experiment. She found my penis strange. It reminded her of a mushroom. I found it strange to sleep with a woman who had more of a man. With the male Turian, after my N7 training, I liked it much better. He also said that human cocks were strange. Shorter, but the head would press exactly in the right places. The sensitive places in it correctly stimulate. Suddenly, two strong hands grabbed his ass. Quickly, the commander bit his lips. His cheeks were pulled apart, and his hidden entrance was uncovered. Garus? I don't need to see it to know you're aroused. And that's why you're doing this now. I'd say this ride is mine. Forget it. Why? You didn't ask me yesterday, either. Hey, that was just revenge. After all, you fucked my throat sore before. He cramped when his fingers hit the muscle ring. Alone at the thought of the long claws there, he panicked. Sizzling, he sucked in the air. The Turian seemed to understand his concerns. As soon as the muscle ring contracted, the finger disappeared. The sniper made an unhappy growl. Loki, on the other hand, was relieved. His best friend wouldn't take him unprepared. His cheeks were pulled further apart. Horse breath grazed his flip side. No, 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 no! Are you crazy? That's disgusting! Garus, I warn... <clears throat> uh... A rough tongue penetrated the tight muscle ring. He felt a slight scratching on his inner walls. Shepard's fingers clawed into the sheet. He had always found the idea disgusting. A tongue there. That was... Then all his thoughts were wiped away. 
the cheeky tongue banged against his prostate. Groaning, he threw his head into his neck. The Turian immediately understood this hint. More and more he massaged this plexus of nerves. His muscles began to relax. Without wanting it, he pressed his ass firmly against the face of the other. Loki twisted his eyes. He was already close to his climax. The sniper just dropped him. Panting heavily, he lay in bed and tried to collect himself. He heard drawers being opened. His gaze was blurred. You look so horny, Loki. Garrus! Do you know what we're gonna do now? You want to fuck me. Oh yes, I will. And I'll take it and then send it to Kaiden. Not funny. The Turian pulled his anus apart with two fingers and let lubricant run into his entrance. His hips were grabbed and he was pulled on all fours. As soon as he knelt in front of the other, he felt a hot member. Almost cautiously, the dick pierced the narrow muscle ring. Shepard sank into the pillow, unstable and groaned in torture. The tip alone stretched him more than he ever thought possible. His body seemed to be on fire. Fuck, are you tight? Hard, he bit his lips. He stretched more and more. His penis gave the first drops of itself. It hurt so damn much and was still so horny. Garus tore him up real good. Finally, the Turian remained. Shepard laboriously straightened up again. His entrance pulsated around the hard dick. Relax, Loki. Relax. He had an easy talk. Firmly, his cheeks were pulled apart, and the mighty prick penetrated farther into him. Suddenly, he yelled, screaming. His prostate was hit directly, and he suddenly saw stars. Garus used this chance. Clapping, their bodies met. Something tore in him, but it didn't matter. He was in pain, but that didn't matter either. Screaming, he threw himself into the hollow back. Sharp claws pierced his hips and left bloody streaks. He finally bit his lips hard. He must not lose control. He wasn't like that. The sniper withdrew only a little and then stabbed him again. Desperately, the dark-haired man tried to control his breath. Drop down. Desperately, he just shook his head. He couldn't do that. He was not allowed to do that. So much responsibility lay on his shoulders. He could not lose himself. A firm hand embraced his member and pumped it mercilessly. Unbeheld, he pulled up. Garus always rubbed his penis while his dick maltreated his prostate. That's a good boy, Loki. Moan for me. His abdominal muscles tightened uncontrollably. Suddenly, the kind hand moved away from his privates, and Garus withdrew a bit from him and stabbed him hard. Again, the head of the dark-haired man sank into the pillow, and his teeth buried themselves in it. Slowly, the Turian retreated and stabbed him hard. The other one drilled himself harder and harder into him and made him moan again and again. He felt so incredibly full. The sniper rammed himself firmly into him again and again, and finally surrendered, rumbling. Loki could swear he felt the seed shoot deep inside him. He himself was about to be. Garus. No, Loki. Not by a long shot. His knob was pressed into a tight ring. Hopefully that was a bad joke now. But then his best friend continued mercilessly. The pressure became bigger and bigger. Garus pulled him up. Now he knelt upright and could lower his head against the shoulder of the other. You're so horny, Loki. Oh, how you shiver. Do you like that? <laughs> Does my dick deep inside you make you horny? Yes. Do you feel how I pulsate in you? Ah. Your hole is made for me, Loki. Again, he hit him hard. Gara suddenly withdrew almost completely from him, then returned to him with one hard push. Shepard cried out with a yell. Despite the cock ring, he gave a little push of his seed. Tears dripped down his cheeks. It was an unbearable pain, and still the hottest thing he had ever experienced. He was pressed firmly against the hot body. He couldn't say what Garus was doing, but suddenly they were standing in front of the bed. The strong hands drove to his thighs and pulled them apart. All his weight was now carried by the Turian. He was completely helpless. With his eyes closed, his head sank into his neck. His whole body trembled uncontrollably. Open your eyes. The dark-haired man obeyed the order. The next moment, he moaned displeasedly. 
They stood in front of a mirror. He saw his hard cock protrude from him, and between his spread thighs he saw the blue dick stuck in his ass. With every thrust, his penis struck against his abdominal wall. Take a good look. Loki twisted his eyes. Again and again, he groaned up, tormented. The sniper kept drilling into him. Suddenly, the sniper growled, dark again. Shepard thought he was burning inside, but Garrus didn't give him a break. He continued mercilessly, and the dark-haired one enjoyed it. Do you want to come, Loki? Oh, God, yes. Loosen the ring. With trembling fingers, he followed this request. The toy fell to the ground, and he breathed a sigh of relief. Fingers away. You will only come through my knob. Garrus. You're my bitch, Loki. <laughs> Say it! I'm your bitch. Fuck me harder, Garrus. Tear me to pieces. Fuck me. The sniper gave out an incredibly dark growl. His whole body was vibrating. These vibrations finally hit his prostate. Immediately, all his muscles tightened spastically. His sperm splashed against the mirror. The Turian stabbed him one last time. The thick base pressed itself into his muscle ring. Loki thought he was dying, but so it was perfect. Again, his best friend filled him. Pointed teeth bored into his shoulder and he cried out. Although his last climax was only seconds ago, he came again. He didn't know how to get back into bed, but that's where he was now. Garrus had treated the bite wound with Medigel. Smiling, he looked at his best friend. That was damn good. Oh yes, we should repeat it on occasion. Deal, but the next ride is mine again. Thank you, everyone. For coming to this episode of Fan Fiction Friday. Once again, the fic we read was Blow Off Steam by Irene Census. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. We have new Fan Fiction Fridays every Friday. And if you have a fic you would like us to read on the show, please leave it in the comments down below. Until next time, stay awesome and read more smut. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> what was this? Oh, that was bad! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we were the first people to leave a kudos now, though. Good and for possibly, like, the first fucking people to read us. It. And possibly, like, the first God, people to read God, never it. again am I sorting by most recent. I mean, we could. We just need to find a, a better one. Yeah.